Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about ARIS, or Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. Now one day last week, while I was working from home here, I got a Twitter notification letting me know that there was going to be an amateur radio contact between one of the astronauts on the International Space Station and a school radio club in Sussex County, New Jersey. So I decided to take a quick break from work, and I grabbed one of my SDR Play receivers, hooked it up to my personal computer, and my two meter antenna that I have outside and figured I'd listen in and see if I could hear the space station from my QTH here in Connecticut. I was able to hear most of the transmissions from the ISS as it started its pass in Canada up over the Great Lakes and made its way over New York State, pretty much right over New York City and then off towards the southwest into the Atlantic Ocean on its way over Africa, I guess. So down in the video description, I'm gonna leave some links one is going to be to a full live stream that the Sussex Charter School created for this event. So if you want to watch the whole thing so that you can hear the student questions and the astronaut responses, check the link in the video description. Another thing that I'll mention is that RIA, N2RJ, was at this event and is actually featured in the Sussex Charter School's video. And I believe at some point she's going to have some information on her channel. So I'm going to leave a link to that down below as well so that you can check there for more in-depth interviews and information from behind the scenes of this contact. So as I already mentioned, the receiver that I was using to receive the ISS downlink on 145.800 MHz was my SDR Play RSP DX. Now the antenna that I'm using is an old two meter vertical from Bozak and it's up on my garage roof, maybe only about 15 feet in the air. And with that setup, I was able to hear most of the transmissions from the ISS that the school was able to hear. Now here in Northern Connecticut, I'm about a couple hundred miles away from Sussex County, New Jersey, and I wasn't able to hear anything that the school was transmitting to the ISS. Now coincidentally enough, from what I could tell, the ISS path over the region was about halfway between me and Sussex, New Jersey, which is why I think I was able to hear almost as much as the school club was able to hear. Now I'm not sure what radios the school club was using to talk to the ISS, but in the live stream video they did show the antenna array and they had a couple of automatically steered Yaggies that they were able to kind of point at the ISS as it was traveling. So I'm sure that's why they were able to hear it a little bit longer than I could. Now one interesting thing that you'll see in what I recorded from my SDR play is that as the transmissions progress, you can watch the frequency shift due to the Doppler effect as the ISS passes overhead. And in some cases, you can even see the frequency drift a little bit as the astronaut is making his transmission. So keep an eye out for that as you watch my footage. One last thing that I'll mention before I roll this clip is that I cut out all of the dead space where the students we're transmitting to the ISS. So all you're gonna hear are the various transmissions that I was able to hear from the ISS down to the school. Kilo Delta 2, Yankees is November Alpha Sierra Sierra. Yes, I copy, loud and clear. I have you loud and clear, over. I am ready, over. We keep track of space of debris. Sometimes uh, we change the orbit of the space station to avoid the contact, but if we feel like we cannot avoid it, we've actually had that situation one time and we close all the hatches as possible to minimize the impact of a puncture in the hole. That has not happened yet though, over. We use a resistive exercise device that relies on vacuum cylinders to serve as springs. Imagine it's like a um, seesaw where one person is holding up on the other end of the seesaw while you pull up on your end and you change where the fulcrum is to determine how much of a mechanical advantage you have. Over. I can tell you an experiment that I've been working on earlier today, we'll work on later today, is one that takes some human cells and we're testing to see how uh, medicine, different medicines affect them with the cancer that is uh, part of those cells. Over. I think it's really important. We're in low Earth orbit and we want to make, we as NASA want to make sure that there's a successful commercial enterprise that works in low Earth orbit so that we can focus the government dollars on exploring, exploring further and further away. Over. Austin, I'm not aware of the details of the Deep Space Food Challenge, but uh, I can tell you that the best space food I've eaten has been fresh food that we rarely get. It's uh, 
We had some mangoes up here, and it was incredible. In fact, we just received a cargo ship with some additional mangoes. They're, they are ripening on board now, and I'm very excited about trying them out. Over. We probably talk during the workday to Mission Control at least every 10 minutes. We are constantly talking to them. Over. We actually have a procedure for that. The very first thing we need to do is do the procedure to try to regain that communication. The reason for that is the ground actually controls the space station from the ground. And uh, we can do many of those things to control the space station, but there's so many subject matter experts on the ground. Our first priority is to regain that communication. Over. We actually have to artificially pick a 24-hour period, and we chose to use Greenwich Mean Time. We just make sure we turn off the lights at night. Over. Matthew, the biggest uh, thing that protects us from radiation from the sun is the fact that we're close enough to the Earth to be within the Earth's magnetic field, the Van Allen belt. So that's the primary way we are shielded in orbit here. It'll be a bigger problem when we go back to the moon. Over. That's a great question, Thomas. We actually have a left-hand controller, which, which uh, controls translations. That would be up, down, left, right, in and out. And then we have, in our right hand, we use the right-hand controller that controls things like pitch, yaw, roll. So changes in the direction that the robotic arm is facing. Over. CJ, great question. Uh, the Russians, funded by the United States, actually put the first part of the space station together. It was the Zarya module, also known as the functional cargo block. It's been here from the beginning. There are no, we, ex we are working through all the details now to make sure we understand how to safely deorbit the space station. And I don't expect to be able to reuse any of those parts after that. Over. We actually have a potable water dispenser that we use to rehydrate some foods, but we can also use it to uh, inject water in, hot water into a towel. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 320 plus days, is uh, putting hot water on a washcloth basically and washing off that way, over. Jason, we have doctors that we can consult with and we've got a good medical kit with lots of medicine, so that helps out. But if things got really bad, we always have a spacecraft with a seat for every crew member that's attached to the space station. So if it was really bad, we could depart the space station. My least favorite chore in space, probably like some of you, um, is vacuuming. I have to, uh, we have about an, two hours of house cleaning that we do every weekend, over. Michelle, my least favorite chore is the house cleaning we do every, uh, every week for about two hours. For us, that means wiping down the walls with uh, um, sanitizing wipes and also vacuuming, over. Now once again, if you want to see the replay of the live stream that the school made during the contact, or more in-depth information from RIA, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.